My name is Rhonda Stapleton and I am a chaplain through the Free Methodist Church and I'm the founder and director of Samaritan Village. Samaritan Village is um, a program or a place where women can come together, a safe haven for women who desire to be free from um, sexual exploitation and drug addiction or trafficking. Yeah, guys, this is awesome. You just made my day. <laughs> yeah. Samaritan Village started for me, and I didn't know this at the time, when I moved into Holden Heights neighborhood um, from Kentucky, and that was 10 years ago. Um, and I moved here actually to work with another ministry, an inner city ministry, and began to um, become aware of some of the ravages that the women go through. I, I remember still, even today, the very first time I saw a woman get into a car with someone um, for a date, you know, outside of my front door. And the impact it had on me was huge. I, I had really never seen that before. These are ladies who have hopes and dreams just like anybody else. And it's not like they grow up um, to say, ooh, I want to be involved in prostitution or drug addiction. It, you know, it happens. Something happens along the way. And when you begin to hear those stories, then it begins to make sense to you. And from that ministry, while I was still living in Holden Heights, I went into the jail system as a chaplain with the women in the female detention center and um, would see the same ladies coming through the jail system over and over again. There are a lot of women who want out of that cycle because it is just a vicious cycle and they want out, but there's really no place for them to go. And um, one of my um, opportunities as a chaplain was to try to find places for ladies to go once they got out of jail. And little did I know then that God would challenge me to someday open a Samaritan village where they would have that opportunity. I grew up very confused. I didn't ever thought that I had a choice of any kind. I had to do what everybody said. That's all I was used to. If I wasn't in the streets, I was incarcerated. And, and when you're incarcerated, they tell you when to go to the bathroom, when you can't, when to go to sleep. I never knew how to take care of me and that I did have a choice, that I had a mind to make something better for myself. So when people would tell me, you know, you don't have to keep doing this, I would look at them and be like, really? You don't understand the life that I've came from. And somebody always has to tell me what to do. If not, then it's drugs. I just never thought that I'd prostitute for a living on OBT. I thought I was suffering from um, a rheumatoid arthritis. I was barely being able to walk, but I was still out there. And I was at the clinic on OBT because I couldn't bear, I couldn't even walk anymore. And a friend of mine says, here's a bus ticket. Why don't you go to the Christian Service Center? And I says, well, I'm going to go over there and, and see my friend, Cindy. And um, she says, if you can hang on for me, she says, I think within a month or two, Rhonda Stapleton is opening up a place called Samaritan Village. She says, I'm sure that she'll have a bed for you but you need to just hang on. And in my mind, I'm like, hang on, two more months. And so I was like trying, dragging my legs, not walking, trying to do what I had to do, but waiting. And sure enough, two months later, I, you know, the pimp tells me, some lady called you, said she's your sister. So I called and I take the phone to the room so they don't hear me making these plans that I'm thinking to leave them. <laughs> And she says, are you ready? And I says, man, am I ready right now? She goes, I'll be right there. I had not even no clue that they were already on their way to get me. Nobody has ever fallen too far that God doesn't reach them. Nobody has ever messed up too much that they don't deserve a second chance. I'm grateful for second chances in my own life and you know, I want people to understand that um, all of us get second chances. Maybe we don't deserve them, but it isn't about what we deserve. It's about um, that we serve a God who does care about our wholeness, um, not just for eternity, but while we're here. And He cares about our day-to-day -day life. He cares about the quality of life. And He wants us to have abundant freedom in everything that we do. I just really have this faith that I really never had. 
This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. But I'm grateful. Samaritan Village to me means life. Because if I would have stayed where I was at, I know I would have died. I wouldn't be here right now. So I have to be thankful and grateful for my life. You know, the, the biggest thing I think that people can do to help Samaritan Village is pray for us and pray for the women as they go through the struggles they have. If anyone is so moved to help us financially, we would so greatly appreciate any help you know, that, that someone could afford us. Volunteers make the ministry operate. We would um, not be able to function without volunteers because of um, just the value that different people bring to the organization, the different gifts and skills that people bring to the organization. And also, um, you know, to, to shop at and to donate items to Transitions, a resale boutique, which fully 100% sponsors Samaritan Village. My biggest, wildest dream for Samaritan Village is that it would have a history of women who are free and who have a fresh start and who know life as they've never known it before because somebody believed in them enough to give them a second chance. And that's my hope.